surprisingly accurate. It, it's it's kind of shocking. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I was in a band. My first band was called Sex Art, and it was with Jonathan and Dave. And so you know, it's it's an interesting thing that we've been together for 30 years. You know, that friendship, and obviously the friendship with Jonathan. You know, when he finally left and did Corn. You know, Corn didn't really have any songs yet so they played blind which which you know we wrote which jonathan and i wrote and they invited me to come see them play you know just as friends and and i went and saw them play in la and the, i saw what happened when they played blind and i was just like holy shit this is serious this is serious music and uh, we hadn't really had the opportunity yet to see what the weird music we were making in Bakersfield, you know, what it would actually do to a real audience. And, you know, cause we just had our little friend audiences in Bakersfield and, um, it was pretty serious. And that ended up becoming my first experience with selling millions and millions of albums and owning a piece of that publishing. And then Jonathan came back and signed orgy to elementary records, which was a subdivision of Warner brothers and reprise records. And so he's always been there for me and uh, always been, you know, amazing. And obviously Jonathan's little brother, Marky, was a singer for Edema. And, you know, Jonathan helped, you know, teach Marky and all that kind of stuff back in the day. And that's probably fall, fallen apart quite a bit because Marky's, you know, really not been a great person and hasn't really respected the the art and the fans and the, and the band and, you know, obviously isn't doing it anymore at all. You know, just doesn't doesn't seem to care. But, you know, Dave, Jonathan and I, have remained friends for 30 years. Yeah, so I was going to ask like way, way later, but since you mentioned Mark, you know, Adema seems to have a bit of a tumultuous relationship with him where every few years it seems like he's trying to come back. They, they book a show, they book a tour, then all of a sudden he's gone again. You're the singer of Adema now, you're their fifth singer. You know, have they indicated that, you know, if he tries this, to, tries to come back again, that they might give him another shot or is like, is this lineup it? Is this Is this the band at this point? Oh, no, no, there's not a chance. No, no, no. I, I own this. <laughs> there's no <laughs> there's no option for that. No, not at all. I, I tried to put it together with Marky. Um, that's how I ended up accidentally offering uh, or accepting their their kind of plea for some, you know, hey, will you come in and sing for us for a tour? And uh, it just turned out so well that I kept doing it. No, there's no there's no chance. You know, unfortunately, Marky's jumped in, told him that he's going to do it. And then he's he's jumped out, and pulled the plug on too many big tours, on too many good things, and it's damaged the band so badly. Um, you know, these guys will go play. If they get a tour offer, the guys will do it. They'll do it at the drop of a dime, you know, and and you have a situation with Marky where he continually pulls the carpet out from under the band, and, and all they've wanted is for a singer to have his shit together. You know, I happen to be that guy. You know, the, the multiple singers they've had have not had their shit together. You know, and they they haven't had the experience that I've had and they haven't had the vision or the management or the things that I bring to the table. And I, I think that the, the 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 performance of the two singles are evidence, proof that, you know, Amir and I know what the fuck we're doing. You know, they're performing better than any of the singles they've released on major labels with any of the past singers and they're performing on par with the original edema stuff so you know i have all the numbers because i am the record label and uh and it's doing really really well so that for me that was sort of like the indicator of whether or not i should keep doing it or not you know but no i don't think there's a chance in hell these guys would ever do anything with marky again you know most of the fans i think get it the fans that don't get it you know it, it's just unfortunately you're missing someone that doesn't like you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're missing someone that does not care about whether or not you supported him, you know, and that, you know, I've been in a situation with a singer like that and I, and it pisses me off and I, I want to, I want to fix those situations. I don't want my friends to be in a situation where they're an incredible band. They've worked their entire lives to achieve what they've achieved and they have the carpet pulled out from under them over and over and over by a spoiled brat. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like it. And if I'm going to get involved, I'm going to make it awesome and I'm going to be solid. Right. So we're going to get back to, to the edema stuff shortly, but I wanted to kind of work our way there. Like I said, I just want to throw that one at you because it was, it was, you know, topical with, with what you had mentioned. So with 
band, I would always recommend you go back to album one and rediscover what it was that made that amazing. And obviously you can make things newer and, you know, do modern interpretations, but you've got to keep your core elements. And and that's the same thing I told Edema. I was like, you guys have to listen to album one and two, you know, live, we're going to play albums one and two because we're going to let the fans know that we remember why you like the band. So I understand there's been other singers. I understand that there's other albums. I understand there's other good songs, but I don't really give a fuck. We, <laughs> we have to do the things that put you guys on the map. You have to reassure everyone that I can sing them the right way and that and that edema is still edema. And then with the new edema songs, Ready to Die, Violent Principles, and the ones that people haven't heard, you know, they they there's a deep focus on album one and two and um, Bakersfield and what made the band the band in the first place and what sounds and stuff were they using that gave it that signature. And so I pushed them and pushed them and pushed them to think like that. And that's how we got these two singles that work so well. So that kind of ties into two other things that I was going to ask you. I'll ask the the edema one first you already kind of answered that it is you know that you guys are really focusing on the the original stuff the sort of the mark era of the band plus plus the new stuff i noticed that the the third album planets uh that is available on spotify but the kill the headlights and topple the giants are not available uh is that intentional is that label stuff is there a reason that stuff isn't out there it's label stuff um the guys have been through you know, loads of different different scenarios and different types of label things. And I think it's just, I think the house is a mess. And, and part of my job has been, you know, coming in and cleaning up a lot of it. But some of that stuff I don't own and I wasn't part of. So it's not, not really anything I can do a lot about. You know, from a label perspective, it's kind of, it's kind of ridiculous that it isn't there, <laughs> you know, but um, it is what it is. You know, I, I, I don't I don't know what I can do about it. I know that it would be great if it was there. It'd be good for the band. But those are two different labels with two different scenarios. And I, I honestly, I do not understand why they're not up because it doesn't help the label. Right. It's just shoddy business. And and now you kind of, you know, it leads into why we haven't signed a label deal right now. It's not because we haven't got offers. It's because when you do this, the next, you know, 13, 14 songs that we write is they're, it's going to be owned 100 percent by a company that we don't have any control over. And right now, the songs we've released, we have 100 percent control over them. And we've gotten them playlisted on major playlists. We've done everything like a major label does. My small little label has gotten done. And you're never going to have a situation where it's not going to show up places. You're never going to have a situation where, you know, I can't make a phone call and fix something. You know, you're never going to have a situation where the fans are wondering what the fuck is happening with this stuff. You know, it's really fucking annoying. You know, there's no nobody I can call. Hey, why aren't these things up on Spotify? Oh, oops. You know, it's 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 honestly it's fucking ridiculous. And I'm not going to sign a deal with anyone that doesn't allow me to, you know, fix these issues that, you know, that isn't going to help us do things that we can't do on our own, you know, um, and a lot of these labels right now, they're not offering deals like that. They're basically offering you a little bit of money. They own your music in perpetuity and they promise you nothing. And my answer to that is fuck no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, thank you, you know? So you're going to give me, what, 40 grand, 30 grand to do an album? Well, I've got 30 grand, 40 grand. So thanks thanks a lot. I mean, I'd prefer not to spend it on an album. But so I've already got that covered. Um, so what else are you going to do? You're going to own our shit forever in return for what? Are you going to get us on like some major festivals all over the world in the next two years? Oh, no, you're not going to promise that or even try? Okay. Um, are you going to do some?